Life as a landlord is officially over. Okay, so maybe it's not that bad, but life could get a lot harder as a landlord if the new renter's rights bill gets passed. Previously known as the renter's reform bill, which was introduced by the Conservatives, the plans have now been revised by Labour and also rebranded as the renter's rights bill. The name alone suggests changes in favour of the tenants rather than a more mutual set of changes. So at number one, the main change that we have is tenancy changes. This includes no more fixed term tenancy agreements. Right now, at the current time, I place all of my rental properties onto a minimum of 12 month tenancies. I feel this is the most fair thing to do for myself as the landlord, but also for the tenant. We both get the security of that 12 month agreement. However, this could all be about to change. The current proposals see an end to that fixed term tenancies for us as landlords whereas tenants will still get the minimum of 12 months as their rental agreement, but landlords are not allowed to evict them or serve notice during that first 12 month window. After the initial 12 months, well, landlords would then be able to provide their tenants with notice if they wish to move back into their property or sell it. And landlords need to provide their tenants then with a minimum of a four month notice period. On the tenant side, they do not have to commit to a 12 month tenancy. They move straight in onto a rolling contract and only have to provide a minimum of two months notice to the landlord if they wish to leave. And they could literally do that from day one. If it's not already obvious, this is heavily in favor of the tenant and leaves the landlord very exposed. For example, if a tenant moves in and then decides to leave, they can do so within just a few months, meaning that a higher amount of costs and a higher amount of void periods for the landlord. Next is no fault evictions, also known as the abolishment of section 21. As mentioned briefly just a moment ago, the proposed plans means that landlords can only evict tenants if they wish to move back into their own property or if they wish to sell it, but they can't do that within that first 12 months of the tenancy being signed. The only way in which a tenant can actually breach this contract is if they stop paying their rent. And for the landlord to be able to take this to court and for the judge to rule in favor of the landlord, well, the tenant must be in what is deemed as serious rent arrears. Serious being deemed as three months or more of no payments. And this really prompts the question, what if a tenant didn't pay for two months and then pays on the third month and then repeats it? Not paying for two months, paying on the third month. You get the picture. Is it three consecutive months or is it three months overall? I'm not sure on those finer details and hopefully some logic can actually be applied when they come to working out those details. Landlords must also think very carefully about two things. A, the quality of your tenant, because if rules are now getting stricter and it's harder to evict tenants, well, then the profile of the tenant is more important than ever. Not that it hasn't always been very, very important. And B, landlords need to think ahead to the upcoming 12 months, as if they wish to move into their property or sell their property or change its use, maybe make it into a serviced accommodation property. Well, you're not going to be able to if you then sign a tenancy agreement and you therefore can't do it in that first initial 12 month period. Now with rent increases, you can raise rents once a year, similar to how we do that at the moment. You have to do so by giving two months of notice and you can only do this once per year. And the rent increase must be in line with the market rent price. Now, if your tenant is not happy with this increase or believes it is not in line with the market rate, then they can challenge it and it will go to a tribunal. And this really begs the question, if you try to increase the rent and it goes to a tribunal, will this A, come at the cost of the landlord? And will it B, delay the date of rent increase and therefore become a tactic that tenants start to use in order to cause further delays to the rent increases that they would face? Only time will tell on that one. As for bidding wars, well, rent bidding wars will become a thing of the past. My belief is that bidding wars were only really seen in very popular city areas. But with that said, rental bidding wars do occasionally happen. And this is something to be aware of. In fact, my very first rental property rented for 
50 pounds more per month than I had originally listed it for due to multiple applications. So it does happen, just not that often. But following the renter's rights bill, this will completely disappear because landlords must publish a property with an asking price rent and then cannot accept offers over that rent even if there are several applications. The idea is great, but it does make me wonder if landlords will really try pushing up their rents each time they have a void period, because after all, if you aren't allowed to accept offers over your price, well, why not just try listing it for a higher price in the first place? But now for a positive change. The renter's rights bill is looking to put an end to all discrimination, okay? This will include discriminating against races, people with children, people with pets, or even people on benefits. The new bill has actually suggested a new landlord ombudsman will be put in place to help manage this. And landlords will no longer be able to advertise properties with specific discrimination, which they shouldn't really be allowed to now anyway. Although with all of that being said, I have had it on good knowledge from a letting agent that I work with regularly that landlords will still have full choice over the tenant they choose. Okay, so if you've put your property online, there's three applications that have come in with a specific candidate who is better than the others, maybe because of salary and other attributes, well, they're obviously likely to be the one that gets picked. As unfair as some people might find that, that is surely a right that we are entitled to as the landlord. Next is the Decent Homes Standard and AWARB's Law, which I think is how you pronounce it. Named after an unfortunately tragic case involving a toddler who died due to mold exposure, AWARB's Law will now apply to all the private rental properties, meaning landlords must fix serious health hazards like dampness or mold within a set time frame, or they'll face penalties and fines. The decent homes standard will also apply to all rentals, ensuring properties are safe and habitable. And although we are not yet sure what these standards will be, we will likely find out prior to them being rolled out. Overall, I don't actually think there's much to complain about there. As much as we hate maintenance as landlords and we hate mold, it's still something that we should take super seriously for the sake of people's health after all. And although I think placing fines on landlords is a bit of a joke, especially when most of us landlords know that mold and damp issues are often due to partly because of the property, but it's also somewhat due to the way that a tenant lives in that property. I actually think there's a massive lack of understanding when it comes to drying clothes, opening windows and airing your property properly and that should really be addressed. But that's a conversation for another day. Now, prior to giving my personal views, the final piece of the bill that is worth mentioning is a new landlord database, which is to list all landlords and all properties on there. In fact, landlords won't be able to list their rental properties on the market until they've actually registered on this database. The cost of registering is currently unknown and how much information will be shared publicly is also unknown. So here is my opinion on what the potential cons might be for the renter's rights bill. First of all, I do think it's another blow to property investors. You know, if you're trying to improve an industry, if you're trying to make more homes available with better living conditions, then why not accommodate the landlords that obviously own those properties and encourage them financially, rather than continuously make it tougher for landlords to make more profit? Because if you make it tougher, well actually you're gonna find the conditions become worse. And I do actually think some of these rights could exacerbate problems. For example, these changes are going to make it more important than ever for landlords to choose the right tenant, which ironically, I think means that landlords will be really careful around this. And we could actually see an increase in discrimination and an increase in rents because of landlords trying to be very picky and get the right amount of rent for their property. Lastly, I think this would just become a losing battle for accidental landlords. Anyone that's just got one or two properties on the side as a potential pension pot might be squeezed out of the market, which I do think is a great shame, but it is what it is. So what are the pros, if there are any after all? Well, first of all, no rent control was discussed previously 
rent control has been brought into Scotland, for example, and that is not something that anyone should want to see, landlords or tenants. It doesn't really do either side that much of a favor. Another pro that we could see is that with some of the landlords being squeezed, perhaps if they've got one or two properties, or perhaps because they're at the end of their property journey, perhaps they're retiring, we could actually see landlords selling up a percentage of properties, which although we don't want to see, we don't want to see the, the industry selling out, and I absolutely don't think that's gonna happen. We will see a few landlords just take this as the final straw, they'll exit the market. And what that does for us as new investors is gives us something to invest into. Perhaps there will be an extra percentage of properties coming to the market which are ideal as investments. I think this bill is overall negative towards landlords. However, it does increase the importance of professionalism within property. If we strive to be the best professional landlords that we can with bigger portfolios with properties that are in better locations and properties that are in good condition with good quality tenants, well, then we don't have too much to worry about because we're at the top of our game. My final thought is that landlords will live to fight another day. This bill could have been worse and we have to reflect on the pros and the cons of each situation that happens. I don't think this will be the end of property investment and I don't think it will be the big issue that the mainstream media companies will undoubtedly make it out to be. As investors, we just need to be prepared for what these changes mean and we need to make sure that we're not in breach of any of the changes as we could face a fine or a penalty. And after all, landlords have made it through recessions, Brexit panic, a pandemic, Section 24 tax changes, threats around EPC regulations, which obviously have now been delayed, and most recently, the Labour government. Not only because they are likely to impose this bill on us landlords, but because Labour are threatening anyone who does well for themselves as the people who are going to bear the burden to these additional tax changes and costs over the Labour term. Right now, this bill has not been passed and could change as it passes through Parliament. But within the industry, it seems that the general consensus is that this bill will eventually be passed and that we should brace for the impact of it. The timeline is seemingly likely to be 2025 for the tenancy changes and the no fault evictions with other changes more likely to be finalized and introduced in 2026 and 2027. I hope this video has been useful. Thank you for watching as always, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.